Hello everybody, this is Kate Stashney from Dedicated. We're at Snowflake Summit. I'm here talking to Luke Stanky. He is the product evangelist for Sigma. Luke, how's your day going? Oh, it has been fantastic. Like the crowd here is just unbelievable. Just reminds me of like 2019 at some conferences where things finally really have been buzzing at a level that just haven't been matched in a while. Absolutely. Every time I stopped by your booth looking for you, <laughs> it was so crowded, so many people, so many demos. People are just nonstop lining up to learn more. Yeah, I love that. We've got we've got seven stations that we've been demoing and it's been nonstop people coming through. So it's real testament to being able to see and interact with the product. Uh, quite a unique experience because I think a lot of people hear about what's possible with self-service analytics and business intelligence, but they did, they've never actually seen the product and been able to interact. So now this is their first time to actually see it in action and it's uh, it keeps people around because they're so interested. I agree. So since we're at the Snowflake Summit, let's talk about Snowflake. How does Sigma partner with Snowflake? I thought about this for quite a while and uh, very closely is my short answer to it all. So any part of Snowflake, we have built an integration for that, whether it's connecting to your data or you're connecting with Cortex AI or any version, uh, Snowpark, the container services, every part of Snowflake you can bring into Sigma. And I think that's the very important point that we'll probably chat about later. Mm -hmm, absolutely, so very closely is how they partner. Thank you for yeah. that. Um, so you, you focus on bridging the gap between business users and data scientists. So talk a little bit about how do you actually do that? This is a, not an easy question to answer by any means because when you think about how you have to work with data as a business user, it often revolves and has to go through IT. And that's sort of been the except, expectation is that you sort of expect maybe an agile-like framework, but really it's the, almost a doom loop that you have to go through. You connect to data, you explore it, you identify a problem, you bring it back to IT, you put in a ticket, you wait for the data to be updated, and then you do that over and over until you build maybe a dashboard or some report or some output. And the reality is that there are ways around that. You don't have to follow that approach. Uh, and that's where Sigma comes in, mm -hmm. and that we think about the self-service component of this that brings data data and business teams closer is via a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. And that, if you again, it seems so intuitive, but the way of working for a business user is typically through a spreadsheet. They yes. always ask, hey, can I export this Excel, work in the way that I want? And that's because they want to add context yeah. to their data. They want to be able to add columns and write new data in, and that's often what's happening in that doom loop cycle. That is the agile cycle. So that's sort of like one of the first things that we offer. And then really the other is that a dashboard is sort of an endpoint for most people, or at least they think about it as the endpoint. But what happens afterward is you end up taking data out, exporting it, and doing something else with that information. Yeah. So you have really, again, with Sigma, the ability to not only just write back data, but to build not just a dashboard, but an application so that you can take action from your product via a click of a button or adding more context. It's not self-service, yeah. and I think that uh, it, it sort of has become the expectation of, oh, you're going to have an, a giant IT team supporting and helping build really low-value add support to a team and not creating new sources that are of higher value. And that is ultimately because you can't interact with the data, again, with the way that a business team expects to interact with the data. They want to get granular right away. With other business intelligence platforms, yeah. if you think about their way of operating, it's sort of a top-down approach. You sort of add and build and bring in more and more granularity because the architecture behind the scenes isn't designed to scale with today's cloud needs. Yeah. That's where Sigma was developed from the start, is how can we architect a platform that allows people to get down to the most granular data, mm -hmm. then be able to see that data in a spreadsheet form, add data and take action. I love that. I think so many companies focus on getting people out of spreadsheets, and you're like, well, you love spreadsheets, stay in the spreadsheet. It's, it seems counterintuitive, but what we talk, AI is still really important for everything that's happening. Yeah. But at the same time, you have to bring the mode of which the majority of people are working. And it's like we've ignored what people have been asking for for a decade. Yeah. The answer has been, oh, you want to have a visual query way because you want to see and interact with it. And every single uh, technology is sort of built that, and then users are still going, well, 
I'm not really interested in that. Really, I just want to get to like the cell level data. Yep. Show me what's hiding underneath there so I can understand the context. And so just listening to users is right. like such a, uh, I guess, bizarre way to think about it, but it's the most straightforward way Logically, to do it. Logically, yeah. yes. Um, so you focus on flexibility, right? So flexible language. I think you can use spreadsheets, SQL, Python yeah. to work. To, how does that even work? So, uh, like, we've just talked about spreadsheets, and I think that we've uh, isolated ourselves to supporting the business user, but the reality is is that you've got other teams that are also going to want to work yep. together and mm -hmm. use the language that they prefer. So, great, we allow you to connect to data and use spreadsheet form, but we also have the ability to bring in different cell cells, so if you wanted to have a Python cell that you bring in, similar to a notebook, right. and place it on a page, then you can work directly in Python, and the best part is that mm -hmm. those other elements you have that might be for business users that are bringing in tables or even visualizations, you can call those in our Python scripts. Oh, so wow. great, you want to work truly work together, you can do that on the same canvas, which is, I think, a very unique approach to working with business. I haven't heard of that before. That's how I was like, tell me how this works. It's mm -hmm. like, you can speak all these um, different uh, languages and support but them. But behind the scenes on all that is, Back to sort of the early point that I brought up is that we work closely with Snowflake. Yeah. We're bringing in all the integrations of Snowflake to actually make this happen mm -hmm. for our product. Awesome, so Copilot. We've got the Sigma Copilot, and my question to you is first, how does that work? What do you do there? And how do you put guardrails in place to avoid our favorite hallucination? Yeah, hallucinations are, first of all, hallucinations are inevitable, yeah. and guardrails do help. But first, let's answer sort of the question around like, what does our AI do? Right. There is certainly a co-pilot like, part of our product that we are bringing to market, yep. and that co-pilot is ask a question, return some insights. Mm -hmm. And what it's doing is it is taking that information, the natural language that's written, looking through the schemas that exist, and attempting to build behind the scenes a query right. for that and return the output. Now, again, hallucinations are completely possible. It's our job to sort of build a rag behind the scenes that can actually curate the right data. But I think the more important thing is that after we return results, you don't just get a number, you actually are returned the work. And because Sigma works from the bottom up, you see the actual, here's the table that was brought in, here's the calculation was created, you validate, make sure that you can see it. You don't have to do any of the work to, other than to visually validate to see, did I return the information? Of course, there is separately in our product, the ability to leverage LLMs like Cortex AI and uh, Arctic this week brought out by Snowflake. You can yeah. bring that in and you can enrich your data, add new columns with that information Ultimately, it is really important for users, when they're using that, to think about the trade-offs that come with speed, having to potentially hand tag right. <laughs> a thousand, a million columns, or they can return what they need. So I think like ultimately, you have to be an expert at some level of understanding your own data and what's being returned. But I think for any line of business, they are already experts in their data, so they're going to be able to quickly visually cross-check that. Right. And for that in Sigma would be creating different chart types, not just living in a spreadsheet. Let's check to make sure that we're seeing the, the expected output and that visually there aren't any outliers that you would expect. That's so powerful, I love that. Uh, so Luke, congratulations. I heard that Sigma raised 200 yeah. million, cheers to Thank that, you. man. That's $200 uh, million dollars in funding. Uh, up round for us. The question is, what are you going to do with this yeah. money? What do you? What, what, can, what can your customers, what can we all see in the next six to 12 months? Yeah, uh, this is probably going to surprise many people, is that we already know exactly what we're going to do with that budget. It was part of the plan well, the that's entire good. time. That's a good uh, thing. <laughs> we are continuing to drive our product innovations that you will see that are not just for spreadsheet users, but are for Python users, for SQL users, those who want to use AI. Yeah. All of them will see those continued innovations, but they're already on the plan that we expected. We're not changing in our trajectory, it just sets our trajectory for the next five years. Amazing, so they already know what they're doing with the money, that's great. <laughs> so, for those who are interested in learning more, where can they go, is it LinkedIn, is it Sigma.com, let everybody yes, know. SigmaComputing.com, everyone can go check it out. You should go to SigmaComputing.com. Awesome, and follow them on all social media, look for Sigma Computing. Luke, thank you so much, and thanks everybody for tuning in. Thank you, it's been a pleasure.